Um, I spent a year with Chris Finch in New Orleans, um, who also coached in the BBL, yep. uh, coached yep. the Rio Grande Valley uh, Vipers like you did. Um, one of the things he mentioned to me during our time together was the the BBL and, and coaching in the G League as well gave him opportunities to think outside the box. And that's something that Pascal just talked about with us yeah. an hour ago. Yeah. And certainly you've been credited with that. How much did those opportunities give you a chance to sort of develop <laughs> yeah. that 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 different way of thinking? Yeah, well, it, it it develops on you. You almost get forced out of the box. You know, I mean, you know what I mean? It's not like you're sitting here saying, oh, you know, I'm going to be a creative outside the box thinker. I mean, you just, you know, what are the situations? I don't know. You get on the bus and you're you're getting a huge traffic jam and the game that, you know, you missed the starting time by an hour and you, you know, what are you're down to six players literally? And you're like trying to figure out, well, how, how are we going to get through this? You know, a six game, well, we're going to hold the ball for the whole first quarter. You know, we're going to run the shot clock, you know, we're going to shorten, take one quarter out of it. You know, I mean, just in there, in every thing you can think of, you know, like, I don't know, like uh, just all the, some of the stuff in different forms, you know, there was a one team over there that had this point guard that just absolutely controlled the game. Like every game, it was like this 38 year old dude and he just was awesome. Right. And I just decided, you know what, we're just never going to let him bring the ball up the floor. And we're, you know, we're just never going to let him just run at his, the game. whatever else happens. I'm willing to live with, you know, things like that. You would just try because you were probably such an underdog and um, you might as well throw something up there and do it. I mean, there was there was tons of uh, tons of stuff like that. But it all came right back to the same thing to answer kind of like your earlier question was, you know, my first year in England. Well, on the on the second return when I was just coaching, there was a team called the London Towers who had won everything for like, you know, they were like Golden State of the year. You know, they'd won like nine years in a row or something. And they just had the biggest budget they had. This is back when there was only two Americans team. They had every English player on their team, every single one of them, you know, on one team. And and um, just used to get in the car every like two or three times a week and drive down to London and sit in the front row and watch them play over and over and over, just watching like, like you know, this is the team I got to figure out how to beat. A lot of that just came from study and work and, and um, really getting to know them and those ideas conjure up after you see them play 40 times live, you know? I, uh, I should just mention here that I actually played against the London Towers when I was at Duke. No My kidding. freshman year, we took a trip uh, during fall break to London. You I sure did. We spent three or four days there. And this you know was, what? Oh, this is fall And of you 02. know what? I yeah. was coaching that team. Was yeah. that Luol Deng? Was Luol Deng with you or was that another? No, that was the, no Luol was. I'm Luol just trying to been. think. I think that was you were there and I was coaching. Were you a yeah. freshman? Yeah, I was a freshman. Yeah. yeah, I was coaching that London Towers team. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I was gonna that's see. Crazy. We played. We played a couple times. Yeah. yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's wild. Um, in, in going to sort of the, the thinking outside the box, and, and I'm glad you brought up this uh, this Belgian point guard, 38 year old guy. Yeah, yeah. Just like you're not gonna bring the ball up. Yeah. Um, we were talking earlier about the box and one with Steph. Yeah. Is there is there a tougher player to game plan for right now than Steph Curry? Yeah. There, I mean, yeah. There, there's there's a handful of them. As you know, he's he's really really tough um, without without a doubt. But you know, I mean, you know who the other ones are. With I mean, they're just it's really hard to figure out what to do with LeBron. He's just seen and he seems to f see and beat everything. There's hard it's hard to make him that uncomfortable. Uh, Giannis really hard. Um, Harden Durant. Um, there's 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 quite a few of them actually, but Steph's Steph's unbelievable. I can't believe the kind of shape he must be in as fast as he runs yeah, the what, whole game, every game. That's that what that was said. yeah. That's what amazed me playing him in the finals. I just you know one of the things I said over and over in that series was like, I know they're running fast, but you got to run fast too. You know we got to run fast too. Keep chasing them. You know like play tag and keep chasing them because it's like nonstop. I think you alluded to this when we sat down. You said something like, I was a headache to game plan for. Yeah, eh, it's very nice of you to say. But yeah. for players like that, yeah. are you literally losing sleep? Like, how much are you thinking about, especially once you get to the playoffs and you've got to figure out uh, a, a, a series against Giannis yeah. or a series against Steph? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, like you know, in all seriousness, seriousness with you, you did something that was unique that they never they would really see. You know, it was it was particular. You know, a you'd be down in that corner. You you physically strong, and you you know get get a good start and push off on them. 
and then when you'd get clearance, and then you'd make I'd push off. No, you I did. Would certainly you certainly use some leverage. Yes, me and you would have these conversations during the game. You were like, "I say he's pushing off," and you'd say, "Well, your guy's holding me first, and he's he's right because I would tell him to hold you, you know, hold you first. But it, it seemed to backfire on us sometimes. But and then when you'd get around the screen, you'd make such clearance different than a lot of guys did. You know that kind of throw ahead that you do and get away and and you know we were coming up with all kinds of things to just go around the other side of you and all you know because everybody's trying to catch up and get back in front and by that time you would already had the shot up so we were trying to go around the back and challenge you to your right hand and we were trying everything to you know we were literally doing drills where guys were trying to push our guys over at the start of you know at the start and, and stay in the race you know so but I don't know I don't think we lose sleep about them too much I think it's I don't know <laughs> it's fun we got to do it every, you know we got to come up with this stuff on the fly sometimes and try to get it in and and uh that team in 2019 I've said it as a hundred times but the things they could do on the fly adjustment wise in a game defensively was just it was incredible it was incredible I've never seen anything like it 